بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد as a clarification about the kalima that we spoke about how the salaf didn't waste their time speaking about individuals this does not mean that the salaf did not refute ahl bid'ah the Salaf, as we know, we have uh, more than sufficient evidence that speaking against Ahl Bid'ah and those people of Fisk and Fasad who attempt to harm the religion and regardless of their intention, the people of Bid'ah that distort the religious principles of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's religion and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and belittle the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. But the point, just for clarification, that I was attempting to make was that spending our time speaking about one another and attacking the honor of one another, any time as the Ruwat, the, the people of Hadith, Ahla Hadith, that when they defended the religion, they did it with ikhlas, as is mentioned in the people, uh, in the books of Jarwa Ta'adil, in the books of criticizing individuals and praising individuals pertaining to the ruwat and so forth, that these are acts of ibadah. As we know, for everything in Islam that we do, if we want to receive the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to meet two conditions. The first one is that it has uh, sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhlas. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُرُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ And they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone. For Him is the pure religion. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا أَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتُ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مِرِيَ مِنَوَى That everyone will get uh, that verily actions are tied to the intentions and everyone will get that for which he intended so that forms the first part of how we can have our deeds accepted is by having sincerity to Allah ikhlas. and the second condition for having our deeds accepted is mutaba' is following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is evidence all throughout the Quran, wa Allah, wa Rasul, and follow Allah and follow His Messenger. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnata khulafa rashidin al mahdiin." The Prophet sallallahu said, "It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat Abu Bakr or Umar or Uthman or Ali radiyallahu taalaanu majmaeen." And the Prophet sallallahu said, "Man akhtata fi amrina hada ma laysa minhu fu warad." Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So that shows us that we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and that we should avoid bid'ah in religious innovation. And going back to the topic at hand, that means that even when we speak about other individuals, that it should only be for the sake of Allah, not to call to our hizb, our group, not to make ourselves seem important or big and have status, not to gain popularity with certain individuals or certain groups or certain sects, not to be like the Khawarij, not to be like any of the other groups of innovation that went astray and had extremism in these uh, matters, in, in these matters of uh, speaking about other individuals. The Khawarij, they may take fear of those people who went against them. And the Khawarij were so extreme that they broke into sects themselves and may take fear min uh, they, they may take fear of each other. That this is the menhaj of the Khawarij, so we have to be careful. We don't want to fall into this. We don't want to see, uh, as we sometimes see some of our brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah, that they spend all of their time speaking about other people from Ahl Sunnah. Just breaking and splitting. Yesterday this person was Salafi, today they're not Salafi. Without hujjah, we're talking about in the situation when there's no evidence or the evidence is weak, or it's based on hawa and desires. And so that's why I want to read this very important uh, 
statement of Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, then Sheikh Salah ibn Fawzan, Alam Rubbani, and Sheikhana, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, may Allah preserve uh, those two Mashaykh, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have mercy upon Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah and bless him with Jannah to Fardos. I wanted to read these statements because there are so many statements from the scholars uh, of the past, the ulama, the, the ulama rabbaniyun, uh, showing and illustrating for us in the, very, in the most clearest of terms that the layman, meaning the, the, the awam and nas, the general people amongst the Muslims, should not busy themselves with issues of takfir, issues of making tifdi, of, of declaring people innovators, and issues of tafsiq, of calling people fasics and wicked sinners. That's not the uh, work and the uh, the mu'amalat of the people who are not grounded in knowledge. Nor is it the as we're going to see from these statements, nor is it the job even of the beginning student of knowledge. Let's hear what Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. This is Shaykh al-Islam's kalam, it's not me. وَيَقُولُ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى وَقَدْ يَنْحُونَ عَنْ مُجَادِلَةِ وَالْمُنَاذِرَةِ إِذَا كَانَ الْمُنَاذِرْ ضَعِيفَ الْعِلْمِ بِالْحُجَّةِ وَجَوَابَ الشُّبْحَةِ فَيَخَافَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُفْسِدَهُ ذَلِكَ الْمُضِلِّ كَمَا يَنْحَى الضَّعِيفِ فِي مُقَاتِلِ أَنْ يُقَاتِلْ عَلَجًا قَوِيًّا مِنْ عُلُوجِ الْكُفَّارِ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in Majmu'a Fatawa, or he, this was actually a statement of his in his book, Dara Ta'arad Al-Aql wa Naql. He mentioned this very important statement. He said, and they prohibited, meaning that it was prohibited by the ulama of the religion uh, to have to debate, because this was not the minhaj of the self to debate and argue, especially over the Quran and over the Sunnah, and to put forth opinions. And there's conditions for when it's permissible to debate and, and not. And that's for the people of knowledge, not for just the average uh, Muslim to get into these debates. And even the beginning student of knowledge, okay, mashallah, he studied Arabic a year or two. He did this, he did this. No, it's not, you know, be humble. Humble yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Shaykh al-Islam said that it is per, it's uh, impermissible or it was pro, it's prohibited to, ha, to debate and argue uh, if the person who is arguing and putting forth their arguments is weak in knowledge and evidence. You know, they, they don't have strong hujjah. They don't know the evidences. They haven't memorized the dalil. They don't know how to, to argue argue properly based on kitab or sunnah. Wajawab shubha. And they don't know how to deal with the doubtful issues, how to reply and respond to doubtfulness. The shubahat of Ahl takfir, the shubahat of the people of uh, extremism and the people who are like the Ahla Tasawwaf, the people who uh, spread shirk and all kind of other bid'ah. If they don't know how to deal with that, then they should keep silent and avoid argumentation and debate. And he said, because it is feared that the person will be uh, corrupted by the, per by the person who is misguided. Similar to the way that the, the fighter that's weak, the weak fighter uh, that fights very strong atheist from amongst the uh, disbelievers. So, Shaykh al-Islam made his point, rahimahullah ta'ala, that this is not for everyone. You know, this takes ilm, it takes knowledge to get in those affairs of, of declaring someone to be an innovator to speak about this one, even though he's a well-known Sufi, or this one who's a well-known takfiri jihadi, and this one who's a well-known from Ikhwan al-Muslimin, and this one who's uh, a person of great extremism. And it requires that we have knowledge, and we're able to articulate that knowledge based on the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf al -Sari. 
So it's not for all of us to involve ourselves and engage in those affairs. What's further proof of this? Let's see what Sheikh Salim bin Fozan says, Hafadallahu Ta'ala. Sheikh Salim bin Fozan said, La yanbaghi li talabat al-mubtadi, al-mubtadiyin, wa ghayrihim min al-amma, an yashtaghlu bil tabdi' wa tafsiq, la anna thalika amrun khatirun, wa hum laysa indahum ilmun wa darayatun fi hadha al-mawdu' wa aydhan hadha yuhdith adawa wa baghda baynahum fal wajib alayhim al-ishtigal bi talab al-ilm wa kaf al-sinatihim amma la fayda fihi bal fihi mudhara alayhim wa ala ghayrihim this is a beautiful station, uh, statement and it suffices us this is sufficient. Sheikh Salim bin Fozan, Alam Rabbani, who I don't think anyone from Ahl Sunnah in this time has doubt about that he is one of our greatest living scholars, as known for uh, uh, preserving and, 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 and calling to Tawheed and Dawil Allah. He said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, it is not permissible for the beginning student of knowledge or other than from the general Muslims to busy themselves or to busy with declaring people to be innovators and uh, tafsiq and also declaring people to be uh, wicked because that is a very dangerous issue or a very serious issue and they do not possess knowledge nor the cognizance in this in these uh, matters also this produces and don't we witness this in our time this produces adawa wa baghda it produces enmity and hatred between them so it is an obligation upon them to busy themselves with seeking knowledge withholding their tongues about those things which have no benefit. Rather, in those things is harm for themselves and for other than them. That's, it needs no other uh, editorials from me. It's sufficient what that Alam Rabbani said. Then our Sheikh said, he said, وَكَلَامْ وَكَلَامْ عُلَمَا فِي هَذَا يَطُولُ he said the, the speech about this from the ulama, the, 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 the statements of the ulama regarding these, these issues, is there are so many statements about basically not being, for, uh, being from the general Muslims getting involved with in issues of takfir and declaring people to be innovators and, and dealing with these issues. And then he said, Wal maqsood and narrad ala ahl al bid'ah will. اشتغال بتبديع المخالفين وتحذير منهم هو واجب العلماء beautiful statement he said and so what the, the main point here is that refuting the people of innovation and busying with uh, declaring people to be innovators and warning against them is from the obligations of the ulama as for the general, أَمَّا عَوَامْ وَالطُّلَابُ الْعِلْمَ الْمُبْتَدِيُونَ فَلَمْ يُؤْمِرُوا بِهَذَا And he says, and as for the general Muslims and the beginning students of knowledge, then they are not commanded with this. They are not ordered to in, in, involve themselves in this. وَلَنْ يَسْأَلَهُمْ Allah anhu, And Allah will not ask them about this. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.